Whoa! Sometimes there's problems in life that cannot be easily quantified. You can't just say x equals 3 or x equals negative 1 or x equals 4. Actually, you've probably encountered this in your own life. For instance, when somebody says, if a tree falls in the forest, is anybody around to hear it? And, which I always kind of found to be a puzzling question because I would have thought over you know, thousands of years of human history or etc. that somebody would have finally said, you know, I don't care if it makes a sound. What I do care about is using it for firewood, fuel, or for burning some other things. But you know, sometimes people want to stay with these philosophical questions that really don't have too much meaning. They say, well, you know, they look at this and say, everything's got to have an answer to it. No, sometimes it just is what it is. And in this case, this particular example and this particular example are slightly different than what we've done before. It's a little skewed. With that said, you will actually see concepts similar to this when you're solving linear systems, which isn't for a little bit of time, but it's nice exposure. And I show this even to uh, pre-calculus students, and they see it, and they get disturbed by this. Oh my gosh! I thought x was supposed to equal something. Well, you know, sometimes x doesn't equal something. Sometimes there's more than one answer. Sometimes there's no answers. <gasps> I know, I just said something that was quite controversial in math, but it happens. So I've got two examples of a linear equation. This one and this one. And they both uh, exemplify different cases. And we're going to start with the first one first because obviously it's first. I want to solve this problem. Well, I can't do anything on the left side. I can distribute on the right side, though, so that's what I'm going to do. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 4, you got to tell me if it's positive or negative. What's 3 times 4? Positive or negative? Positive. Because I have so many students who write 3x12. No, it's 3x plus 12. 3 times 4 is 12. And that's equal to... 3x. Get everything with an x on one side and everything without an x on the other. And you can do this any way you want. You might not be very happy though. So I can't combine like terms. There's nothing I can do, but I can move this 3x. I can get rid of it. Subtract 3x on both sides. But what I do on one side of the equation, I do on the other. Line up like terms. 3x minus 3x is 0. It's not 1. It's not x, it's 0. 3x minus 3x is 0. 0 equals 12. I didn't get x equals a number. There is no x equals a number. It's just 0 equals another number, which it clearly doesn't. Here's a question I ask my students, and I ask them to employ common sense. And sometimes when you don't have the liberty of making mistakes by trying homework problems, you don't get the common sense that you want to. And uh, far from what anyone believes, the only way to attain common sense, and you're not born with it, to attain common sense is to make mistakes and experience life and learn from those mistakes. If you keep making the same mistakes over and over again, you're not, one, employing common sense, and two, you don't have it. So learn from your mistakes. And in this case, that's a mistake. 0 equals 12. When is 0 equal to 12? Is it ever equal to 12? And the answer is no. It's never equal to 12. It's not equal to 12. This doesn't work. They are not equal to each other. And I'm going to circle this, and you're going to say, why are you going to circle it? Because this is the answer. What's the answer? There is no x value that works. There is nothing that you could substitute in that will ever work. The answer is no solution. Whenever you have a number equaling a number, and the numbers aren't the same, the answer is no solution. Let me say that again. If you have 1 equals 8, that never works. It never works. So the answer is no solution, or no real solutions. If you have negative 3 equaling 5, the answer is no real solutions. If you got rid of your x value, and it's not equal to anything, there's no real solutions here. Now, there's another case that we're going to end up doing where the opposite is going to happen. But this one is no solution. Now, some of you might not be convinced, or you might need a little bit more proof, and I'll show you. Let's go back to the second step. 3x equals 3x plus 12. Is there any number 
that you can substitute in to these x values. They, and by the way, if you substitute in a 1, it has to go into both x values. Or if you substitute in a 2, or a negative 3, or a 0, or anything, it has to go into both x values. Is there anything where you can substitute them in, and since this has 12x for no matter what you ever substitute in, that these are going to be equal? The answer is no. This equation isn't even balanced. It's a trick equation. If you want a pictorial representation, it's like this. It's like a teeter-totter that's built like this. It's, it's not built level. It's just built so this side will always be heavier no matter what. No matter if you leave it alone or if two people of 50 pounds come on, it's still going to teeter to this side no matter what. This is a faulty teeter-totter. It's a faulty equation. They will never, ever intersect. There, there will be no solution in this case. When we do uh, linear systems, I'll explain it more, but you're going to need a picture in order to do that. And in order to get a picture, you have to learn how to graph first, which we're not going to do at this point. We're just solving them. That said, let's try another one. I have 2x plus 10 equals 2 times the quantity x plus 5. Okay, I can't add 2x minus 10 together. 2x minus 10 people. Gambit and Wolverine are way cooler than eh, all those other 10 people. And if you don't know who Gambit and Wolverine are, I, I don't know what to tell you. Equals 2 times the quantity x plus 5. So there's nothing I can do here. 2 times x, 2 times 5. Is it positive or negative? You write that operation symbol first. It's positive. Now some of you might be looking at this, and at this particular step, you will be suspicious. And it is suspicious, but some of you might be saying, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. Keep, keep going. Let me figure out what's suspicious about it. Okay, I will. I want to get everything with an x on one side and everything without an x on the other. And I can't combine these, I can't combine these. So I'm going to subtract 2x from the right side of the equation. And what I do on one side, I better do on the other side of the equation, or the other side of the equals. Two x minus two x is zero. It's not x, not one. That cancels two. Ten equals ten. Now some students will go a step further and say, you know, I, I, now I gotta subtract the ten because I'm still not convinced. Okay, fine. Go ahead and subtract the ten. Zero equals zero. That's the answer. Well. Not really, but it tells you what's going on here. I got a question. When is zero equal to zero? And again, this is where students pause when I ask this question, because it's not a question that really requires high school math. And there are students who want to say something, but they're scared that they're going to look foolish. And usually the ones who are so scared, who, 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 who are afraid they're going to look foolish, don't say it. In fact, they're kind of quiet, and then and nobody says anything. Is it, they're always equal. And somebody says, I was going to say that, Mr. Shadi. I was going to say that, but I did not want to look stupid. I'm like, yeah, but if you said it, you would have looked smart. Not that you would have looked stupid anyways for saying it, but you would have sounded a lot smarter because you would have been brave enough to say what everybody else was already thinking. It's kind of like that story about uh, the emperor's new clothes. I'm not going to go ahead and tell you that. You can look it up. It's a little Chinese proverb. Anyways, it's, it's quite fascinating. So zero is always equal to zero. Always. There's no case where a zero is not equal to zero. The answer for this particular problem is all real solutions. When you have a number that doesn't equal another number, the answer is no solutions or no real solutions. When you have the same number equaling the same number with no x, no y values, nothing else but like this, or 10 equals 10, etc., the answer is all real solutions. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that story, but uh, I'm going to tell you after I teach this. You know? And if you want to just shut it off before that, that's perfectly fine. Now, if you don't believe me, let's check it out. Let's go back to this step where I said, suspicious. I have 2x plus 10 equals 2x plus 10. Get rid of this work. If you didn't like the fact that I erased it, Go back, write it down. 2x plus 10 equals 2x plus 10. 
If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1 on this side, 1 on this side. I'm going to get 2 plus 10, which is 12, 2 plus 10, which is 12. No matter what x value I plug in, it's always going to end up being equal. There is no x value that I can think of that won't work. What about 1,752,367,823.6587777? I'm not going to do that, but you can do it. And I promise you, no matter what x value you plug in or substitute in, pardon me, you have to substitute it on the same side, it, it's going to be equal. The equation's always going to be equal. So in that case, when you have something like this, 0 equaling 0 or 10 equaling 10, or the same thing equaling the exact same thing on the other side, the answer is all real solutions. When we end up graphing a linear system, that's going to be quite fascinating. And I want you to remember those two particular cases. So anyways, back to what I was going to say, the uh, story really quickly. You can choose to just move on if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I was talking about where you wanted to say something, but you were too timid because you didn't want to look foolish. Well, here's the story. Uh, Emperor China was uh, quite fashionable. And it's, just, it's just a little proverb. And there were thieves that came into the imperial city, and they had promised the emperor, because they were men from distant lands, and they had promised, you know, silk clothing and clothes beyond compare, a fashion that would that would that would make him, you know, reign forever or look good forever, etc. Just use your imagination. So what happens is they steal his, or they take off his clothing, and the finest silk, finest clothing. They they take it, they just steal it, and they, you know, they 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 dress him or they pretend to dress him, and they don't actually dress him with anything. They just leave him naked, and they say, and the emperor says, "Where are my clothes?" And he says. What do you mean, you know? Your clothes are on you right now. Only a foolish man could not see that you're not wearing clothes. He's naked, but they're convincing him that if you're smart, you'll be able to see the clothes that you're wearing. And, you know, the emperor probably hesitantly says, Yes, I, I see these clothes, for I am brilliant. And, of course, his little posse or his groups, you know, says, Yes, emperor, we see the clothes too. It's fantastic. And he decides to... Uh, you know, go on a stroll to have his peasants and citizens watching, you know, as he's riding around in his little parade type uh, mode of transportation. And everybody's looking and they know he's naked, but they don't want to say anything. And he shouts, these are my new clothes. Only a fool could not see these clothes. And everybody's just timid and they're quiet and they don't want to say anything. And he's just riding along and all of a sudden, a child, a five-year-old child, mind you, points up and says, he's naked. And, you know, everybody all of a sudden, you know, comes along, yeah, that's true. I mean, what we were doing there was we were exercising common sense, but if you were a little too scared to say it, I mean, I understand that sometimes you don't want to say something that, etc. So, that was my long rant on that story. You could have never listened to it if you didn't want to at that point. Other than that, have a great day. Goodbye.